So, reading this fantastic book, and I see it's very popular. Part 13, The Gap Between Perception and Thought. Let's see how he says this. We are quoting here the Shala, Parshas Eked. On this it is said, And you are the ones who cleave to Hashem, your God. You are all alive. This verse encapsulates within it all of the Torah and actions and character traits and ways of man, all for his sake. That is the sake of the Eitz of Baruch Now let's see what he says. When you experience those moments of attachment, and he says that like moments, it's something that you have to build on. You likely didn't realize that you were briefly in a state of no mind connection. This is because the gap between that state and the influx of thought was too narrow. Your aha moment may only have lasted for a few seconds before the mind came in. But it was there. Otherwise you would not have experienced the beauty. Mind, just pure mind, can neither recognize nor create beauty. Only for a few seconds while you were completely there was that beauty or that sacredness there. Due to the narrowness of that gap and the lack of vigilance and alertness on your part, you were probably unable to see the fundamental, fundamental difference between the perception, the thoughtless awareness of beauty, and the naming and interpreting of it as a thought. The time gap was so small that it seemed to be a single process. Now, I'm not sure exactly what he said here. I'm trying to think that what he says is, is that you could have an experience where you actually do see the oneness of all things, but it's fleeting. And as soon as you have that experience, your thought comes in, and says, oh, look at the experience I had. And that right there takes you out of the experience. So the wider the time gap between a perception and thought, so before the thought comes in and captures, so to speak, that experience, the more depth there is to you as a human being. Which is to say, the more conscious you are. Many people are so imprisoned in their minds that the beauty of nature does not really exist for them. They might say, what a nice day today, but it's just a mechanical mental label. Since there are not still and they are not still and aware, they don't truly see the godliness in nature, don't feel its essence, its holiness, just that they don't know themselves, don't feel their own essence, their own holiness. We live in such a mind-dominated culture that it is really of no surprise that people's perceptions have been dulled by the static of their own minds. As long as one cannot free oneself from the mind's clatter, one surely will not be in touch with that place within where true creativity and beauty arise, a tip for aspiring artists. Let's just read that again. As long as one cannot free himself from the mind's clatter, and this is, our, this is his whole, his whole idea. One surely will not be in touch with that place within, where true creativity and beauty arise. A tip for aspiring artists. Many people are so prison. He writes in this blurb at the end. Many people are so imprisoned in their minds that the beauty of nature does not really exist for them. These are the words of Rabbi Yosef Chaim Memran. We're at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel.